Hey everyone, this is Shreyas and welcome back to another video. This is going to be the full review of the Pixel 7a. Now, I've been using this device for about a week at this point and I think I'm ready for my evaluation. It's not the best or the perfect device in this particular price, but it might be a good fit for the people who are looking for things which the Pixel does best. And if you're confused between the Pixel 6a and the 7a right now, given the price points where Pixel 7a is kind of right below 40,000 and the Pixel 6a can be gotten under 30,000, I made a detailed comparison about the same. Make sure to check it out in the card over here or the link down below. I hope that will help you in making an informed purchasing decision regarding the same. So without any further delay, this is Shreyas and let's check that out. In terms of design, I think it is a big win. This is a great step up from the Pixel 6a in terms of how it looks and feels in the hand definitely Pixel 7a stands out. It's not just about the design or how it looks, it's also about it being one of the most compact phones in any price category put together and that's a great thing about it as well. It does get added metal visor and thankfully in a matte finish over here which is great to look at but once you turn to the front of the phone you do see the thick bezels which is definitely more apparent in this lighter color frame as I mentioned in my comparison as well. I don't know what happened since the Pixel 5 which had probably the most uniform bezels if not anything else but yeah this is what it is the budget offering from Google this time. The other good part is that it carries over the IP67 water and dust resistance from the Pixel 6a but what it carries over from its predecessors is Gorilla Glass 3 protection on the front only. There has been no upgrade regarding the same. But moving on to the front of the display, one major upgrade it got in terms of the refresh rate is that it's a 90Hz OLED panel now. Which makes a lot of difference given how Google optimizes the UI and the animations. I really love it. They weren't as bad in the Pixel 6a but now that I have the 7a it stands out by a large margin. You can definitely notice the differences. But yes, if you look at it in isolation, it might not seem as great. Compared to a lot of other UIs which are offered, especially in this price segment, I can probably confidently say this is one of the smoothest and slickest feeling ones out there. The other thing about the display is that the peak brightness is exactly the same as Pixel 6a, but one thing that it does better than the 6a is gonna be HDR performance. I did not really have high hopes about the HDR performance of this particular phone, but it stands out and it's considerably better than the Pixel 6a. Moving on to other things on the front of the display is going to be the fingerprint sensor. Now this also is a huge upgrade compared to the Pixel 6a at least out of the box at launch because the 6a had a lot of issues regarding its fingerprint sensor. If you don't have context make sure to watch this particular video up in the card. Again it will be linked down below in the description as well. This thing works very smoothly is as fast and responsive as the Pixel 7 Pro I use on the daily mostly. Not to mention it also got it the additional facial unlock authentication as well just like the Pixel 7 series. Keep in mind this is 2D face unlock only, it's not going to be very secure. So definitely no payment or banking apps will adopt it for authentication as well. You will have to use a fingerprint in that particular case. But the good part is that this is way more responsive this time around. Moving ahead with the media experience, I think the speakers are okay in this price. It is not the best, definitely I'm sure there are other phones in this price category which sound better and richer maybe. In terms of the volume and the distortion at the top end, it's pretty good and it's definitely better than the Pixel 6a as well. Also gets a slightly more bass in the lower end which is a good addition. It has dual speakers so that's good although the distribution is not that even which is common across this particular price category. Moving on to one of the categories which is definitely going to be a part of the cons of the Pixel 7a is going to be the battery life and charging. This is a bit weird right now. I am probably testing it a bit too early but the battery life on the Pixel 7a right out of the box wasn't that great. I was getting around 5 to 5.5 five hours of screen on time which is okay considering the size of battery it has but definitely could be better if the Tensor G2 inside it was better optimized and did not heat as much. Now right now is the peak of summer and in a lot of places it's going you know beyond 40-45 degrees as well and people are reporting issues especially around the battery life of this particular phone. Now fortunately I did not really have as big as a problem as I did but recently Google also released a statement about how they are aware about the pixels draining battery a lot and they mentioned that it does not require any user action because it's tied up to some backend change in the Google app. Actually improved the battery life over the last two days on my Pixel 7a. 
kind of getting six hours of screen on time but only with you know five percent left but that is considerably better than the five to five and a half of hours of screen on time i was getting now mind you i was using it all the time with 90 hertz refresh rate also i had always on display on apart from the night time or bedtime mode which i have activated the thing that makes it a bit more painful is definitely going to be the 18 watt cap on the charging it is pretty slow People have tested and in again in hotter regions they have reported around 2 hours of charging time. Thankfully in my place it does not breach 35 degrees as such and I have gotten around 1.5 hours of charging time for this particular Pixel 7a. The one feature and hardware it gets in addition to this particular uh, setup is going to be wireless charging although at a meager 7.5 watts only. This is only fit for you know overnight charging if you are doing anything else or playing a video or using it on wireless android auto or something like that it's hardly going to charge up even while doing nothing I tried to test it in around 30 minutes it only charged up to around 9% of battery life which is very very low and I charged it on the second generation pixel stand as well so that's probably the best case scenario for the pixel and the sad story actually continues to the performance part as well. Now the pixels have never been performance oriented as such but with the tensor series of chips and how Samsung fabricates these particular processors they have its weaknesses. A few days ago right when I got it out of the box it was getting warmer even while using very you know low intensive apps like social media apps primarily but then again a couple of days back I noticed that there is no heating as such in this particular phone unless you are using a lot of you know data and while using the video recording feature of the particular phone for a long long time then it definitely gets warm and warmer than most other phones in this particular price segment. So this leads to throttling of performance and when you are gaming especially this is not going to be favorable. I am not a gamer so I am not the best person to test it out so definitely watch reviews specific to that. Definitely the performance could have been better but unfortunately it's the Tensor G2. Let's see what the next Pixel 8 series we hold hopefully some better news than this one. The other problem which this performance caters to is the camera performance because cameras are supposed to be one of the highlights of the pixels but unfortunately because of how it gets hot sometimes it restricts you from recording videos and people uh, sort of reported bugs about how the portrait mode is not triggered at times. I did not personally face that particular issue but yes it, it does exist because a lot of people reported that. That's something I really hope Google fixes soon and you should be aware of as well. But again the 7a makes a comeback in the software department where it's just a delight to use especially for me. I have gotten used to these particular tools because they're not really something you show off a lot but they actually come in handy a lot in the day to day life. Like for example, I will again say now playing is something that I absolutely admire. I've made a lot of YouTube uh, playlists out of the uh, this. Now playing is something I absolutely admire because I've made even a lot of YouTube playlists out of this. Another thing is going to be voice typing. I don't use it as regularly as I would have hoped to but definitely when I use it I know that it is very reliable and I mentioned more details about the software stuff in my uh, long term review of the Pixel 7 Pro as well which you can again check it out in the card over here or the description box down below. This is something that I mentioned and I think will hold true for the Pixel 7a as well. The software updates, material U and the feature drops does not make the experience of the phone boring. The one thing that stays stagnant for most other devices is going to be the hardware but what might make the difference here is the software and Pixel 7a definitely does that just like the other pixels out there. I absolutely enjoy now changing wallpapers and seeing what kind of color themes will suit the overall look of the phone to my particular taste and definitely the widgets have gotten really better in terms of first party offerings from Google. They even tune into material U color theming which is a great thing to see. Apart from that the UI animations are just beautiful. They are probably the best in the industry in terms of smoothness and how elaborate they are without being very intrusive or slow and that's something I love about the Google Pixel over here. The other things that got introduced this time courtesy of software is gonna be the unblur feature although Google says it's tied to the Tensor G2. I tend not to believe them because the uh, magic eraser is something that got introduced on Google One subscription to all Android devices. 
Now it is without the Google One subscription to older pixels as well, even if they are out of the update cycle, they will get it as a Google Play system update, which is great news. So definitely these features are not Tensor specific, rather Tensor might be a platform on which they're testing these things on and then releasing it to the public and probably trying to monetize it, you know, Google One subscriptions and things like that. Next, let's come to the cherry on top of the Google Pixel 7a, which is going to be its camera performance. This is priced higher than what the spec sheet shows and I completely agree with that but one thing that it definitely you know punches above its level is going to be about camera performance. It does lack a uh, telephoto lens but even at 2x or 3x zoom it gets very decent shots at least in broad daylight. Apart from that the HDR performance is top notch and takes a leap above the Pixel 6a as well thanks to newer sensors from the 64 megapixel primary sensor to the ultra wide sensor which has been revamped with a very wide field of view as well and the HDR performance on the ultra wide sensor has taken a huge step forward and you can see especially in my comparison on the Pixel 6a versus 7a the ultra wide has a huge improvement over its predecessor definitely Google nails the image processing in this particular case but also I think a lot of the contribution goes to the larger and better sensor as well same story continues for the selfie camera you get a new sensor here as well and also it enables 4k 30 fps video recording from the front facing camera while being way wider than the 6a as well so these are considerable upgrades if you're considering from the 6a which I again mentioned in more in detail in my comparison video the primary camera might not look like a huge step up and I completely agree with that there is not a lot of difference apart from some depth of field differences which you notice because this is a definitely a better and bigger sensor with better pixel size most of the differences are definitely going to be visible in low light. The low light noise correction, the amount of light it captures, also the ability to uh, manage the night sight shutter speed is something that definitely makes the camera uh, shooting experience better on the Pixel uh, 7a. Not to mention the video recording also is pretty good. Unfortunately, like the big brother Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, it does not get the 4K 10-bit HDR recording. Overall, stabilization is pretty good, although I feel the HDR performance and the video quality overall could have been better but yeah all in all that's been about the pixel 7a to wrap it all up i think pixel 7a is a good offering for those who are looking for a compact phone with a great camera system and very clean and nice software and few folks who are techie and would want some you know fancy features they also get them with the pixel exclusive features one more thing is that the folks who are really enthusiastic about android platform updates and get right from testing the betas or even getting the next platform update first in line right from the big pixels or other oems is something that could be an attraction for you the points to keep in note is definitely going to be the performance and the charging speeds. The battery life has come, come to a point where I think it is good for the battery size that it offers in this particular compact form factor. But then again, it's not been really reliable in Google's history. So that's something you should be mindful about as well. That's been it for this particular video. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely leave a like if you did. And I will catch you in the next particular video.